Hello and welcome back to the KTV studio. It's been just over half a term, so you're all probably wondering what's happened to those candidates that you voted for last year. Well, that's where we come in. What we've done is we've organised all the Sabs into a nice, neat line, and they're going to be coming into the studio and having a nice, informal chat with me where we can catch up, see what's going on, and, get on, and kind of get insight onto their plans. So welcome to KTV's Keeping Tabs on the Sabs. So the first guest we have on for today is, of course, Nina Nemi, our VP for Sport. So Nina, how are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? So it's been nine weeks into, into term of office. How, how have you, how's it been going so far for you? Yeah, pretty well. A bit intense at times, you can imagine, but yeah. I, I really can only good. can. Well, it's, it feels like not that long ago since you were last in here with a huge group of people all vying for your position. I mean, how long ago does it feel for you? Uh, literally like yesterday. It's crazy. I can't believe the end of the first term is nearly up. But yeah, it's flown by. I think over the summer we go away to a lot of conferences and then get back into offices and then suddenly everyone is here and it's crazy. Yeah, but it's going really well so far. Awesome. Well, like I said... I have a few questions for you that have been sent in to us through, you know, Google Forms, Twitter and stuff. And actually, speaking of Twitter, we have actually got our spe uh, special social media specialist, Emily, over on the other side of the room. Emily, how are you doing? Hello, I'm doing brilliant. So, Emily, <laughs> uh, you're our kind of specialist for the, de for the yes. day, which means uh, when I need to, I'm going to call to you and hopefully you'll be getting some rather nice questions coming into you from Twitter. Is that yes. right? Yes, I've got plenty about. I've got most of them are from Anonymous, but it's all on hashtag tab on the sav. Keep that going. Absolutely, yes. We, we have to say, people have been quite shy with giving their names up on the internet. I don't know why. I've been reading them. They're not that mean. I say not <laughs> that mean, though, so get ready. Yeah, I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. They're nowhere near as bad as they were uh, last March. So I'll kick it off with the first one, um, which is quite plainly, um, what do you think your kind of biggest achievement in the position has been so far this year? Uh, biggest achievement in my position so far is probably beginning to get more recognition from the university about the benefits of being involved in sport. I think um, it's always a long battle about is sport important to students and things like that and I think having gone to lots of meetings and trying to lobby for things they are suddenly turning around to the point that sport actually is really important to not only the student experience but to like health and well-being to academic achievements and it's that's been one of my biggest battles and hopefully by the end of the year the university will start to recognise the benefits of sport. Fantastic. Now I'm going to throw you with another one. Um, it's, it says, Varsity is set to be bigger than ever this year, so what are you going to do to make sure the media coverage is better than last year? I promise I didn't send that in. No, I didn't send that in. I I swear, I promise, I promise. I wouldn't want to kind of point it out, but go on. So, um, what do you want to do? In terms of um, Varsity, it's always difficult, isn't it? Because a lot of our fixtures take place at external uh, facilities, but um, ensuring that, especially the matches that are played here at home, uh, obviously with the great internet streaming to get more coverage from like, KTV, I know that. Um, so it was a very busy period, but they did have massive wins, I think, for us last year, managing to cover a lot of it on media. But obviously, keep to the same inquiry coverage and having like, the double page spread in there, and again, across both CSR and all, all of the media. But um, looking to see what we can accommodate and what's possible without being unrealistic. But Fair enough, fair enough. So one more. This one's a bit, well, it's, it's one I'm quite curious to know. If you could be any famous sports person from, you know, past, present or anything like that, who would you be and why? Um, I think I'd have to go with someone current because obviously I'm in the present day. Maybe someone like uh, Chris Robshaw, the current England rugby captain. Um, I don't know I've gone from the male team rather than the female, but yeah, I think it's, it's great and he has such a great perception in the public eye and obviously he's a really great player. Uh, yeah, so someone around like that, I think. Fantastic, fantastic. Now, Emily, I'm going to throw over to you now. Have you got any questions for us? Uh, I've got plenty. Well, we've got another one saying, what is the most important thing you've learned so far during your time as a SAB? Uh, the most important thing I've learned, probably that things take a lot of time and that they're not going to happen overnight, which is very frustrating, um, and that I have to reply to a lot of emails. Um, I've learned that if you word things in the right way, then you can make positive change, and I think it's about trying to cooperate as well as make change at the same time. But I suppose that's I've learned that skill. I think. Fantastic. Very well, it's, not, it's not all uh, kind of campaigning and stuff. It's now diplomacy and emails. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't. Want, I wouldn't want to kind of make you relive that pain. <laughs> Have you got another one for us, Emily? Well, I've got quite a funny one right here. I've got. Can you do any animal impressions? <laughs> Is yeah. that strictly sport related? <laughs> this is serious sure. stuff. This is okay, fine. Right. The, um, the people want to know. I could do I could do a cat impression. My friends are gonna really laugh at me for doing this, but um, 
Meow. <laughs> <laughs> My, uh, that was, I mean, I've just, just been told by the producer that was terrible, so there we go. <laughs> Who's producing this? Is, that, is it Tom? It was Tom Turner, yeah. Let's see him try. Oh, okay, well, we might get him on later to give yeah. it a go. So, if you were to be an animal, would that mean you'd be a cat? Um, Probably not. I don't know, they've got quite an easy life there, haven't they? I don't know. I think it'd be something sort of more adventurous than a cat, though. I mean, cats don't have to answer emails, though. No, they just sleep and eat a bit, which is pretty <laughs> cushy, isn't it, to be honest? True, it's, it's how I like to live. Yeah. Emily, have you got one more for us? I've got quite a controversial one. I've got, Ooh. if you could change the rules... Oh, wait, no, I've got a better one, actually. Oh. <laughs> I've got this one. I've got, Go on. what would you say to combat the idea that sport is all about drinking and lad culture? I said it, they would that be like last better. year. I've completely liked you. I know. Um, <laughs> go on, so go on. What would you do to combat the whole lad culture um, drinking thing? I think lad culture is something like a big issue we always have in sport, to be honest. I think it's uh, always pinned down to a very small minority of people that manage to tarnish a great rotation that sport has. I think this year, especially more so than ever, we've got like protocols that sounds really boring in place, like code of conduct and obviously our zero tolerance policies. But I think ultimately it's about using a bit of reverse psychology as publishing those are the good things that we do do as sports clubs and trying to, I suppose, change the reputation around that way. But lad culture is always something that we're looking into. So bullish, I don't want to use that word, but to change the reputation of and to, as I say, really display the good things we do as sports clubs. Yeah, kind of really put it forward. It's just a vocal minority. It's in no way, yeah. the, you know, the majority of and of, sport. Yeah, and often it's the case. We don't actually know, we can't say that it's not coming from sports. I don't want to say that I'm trying to avoid the situation, but... We do so many good things as sports teams, it's trying to do, like, display those ideas, as I said. Fair enough. Well, I feel like I'll leave the questions behind for now. So now is your time to use this fantastic studio as your platform. Nina, do you have anything you want to say to the people out there? Um, anything you want to say? Uh, please try and get involved with lots of the campaigns I'm doing this year. Uh, one of the, uh, well, uh, that's really three things I'm focusing on. Uh, one around like a free Wednesday campaign for all students to ensure that people can get involved with sports in the time here at university. I know I spoke a bit about recognition, but um, I talk about this a lot because I, I think that ultimately it's not until that the university recognise the benefits of being involved in sports clubs that they really won't do much to change what we already do. And I think around, as I say, the links to academic achievements, the links to just health and wellbeing and just being able to do something outside of your course. And, and that is my real, real big push for this year because until that happens and takes place, then we're still going to be stuck in the same situation where we're not on university agenda for sport. Um, and yeah, just get involved and contact me about things because unless people contact me and try and get involved, then I can't, I can't help out and I can't be that representative that I need to be. Fair enough. There we go. Don't suffer in silence. Um, so if we wanted to get in touch with you, you know, who would we email? Uh, either myself, m.memi at kent.ac.uk, uh, via Facebook, via the social media channels, uh, through the Kent Union platforms, or I'm often out and about on a Wednesday, you'll see me in my bright red coat. Um, and yeah, about doing lots of active campaigning with students. Um, you probably see my cardboard cutout on random places on campus, but... Um, Your lovely cardboard cutout behind uh, me. There, lurking over the back of me. But yeah, just any way you can, even popping into the Student Activity Centre, um, often at my desk. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time, Nina. I know you have to thank run you. off. You're a busy lady, so I shall leave you now. We're going to actually pass over to your colleague, uh, Tom Curry. So thank you very much, thank Nina. You. Thank you so much. Do we go? Right, yeah, absolutely. So, um, <laughs> so that's sport out of the way. We're now going to move over to our VP of activities, Tom Curry. Um, have I just been told? I've, oh, I've been told in my ear. So Jack Lay is on. I'm sorry, my, my cards have lied to me. Jack Lay, our VP for education. Come on down, come on down. So, how, how are you doing, Jack? How's your day been today? Good, good. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to kind of throw you with the same formalities that I gave to Nina. Nina, it's been nine weeks, you know, we, you've really kind of got stuck in now, you're kind of used to the position. How's it been going so far? Yeah, really, really well. Like, it's, I've really enjoyed myself. I've had, kind of feels like yesterday when we actually got elected, but been really active in the summer, done lots of things, already got some wins with students, which I'm really happy to talk about later if you want. Fantastic. Well, um, in which case, I will kick off with the questions then, which uh, go as such. So the first question I've got is, what's being done about the current uh, situation concerning free education across the country? What is being done about free education? So um, I guess this is alluding to, there's a demo on the 19th of November in London, 
which unfortunately the NUS did not support because it wasn't safe for students, they felt, and um, liberation campaigns felt it wasn't safe, and obviously you've got to listen to liberation officers if they feel that's right. So um, as a result, Kent students didn't go to it, and the NUS put out their um, knowledge. So, so what um, is happening in general is the NUS are running lots of campaigns to release a toolkit on the road for education. I believe we need to campaign first for um, postgraduate fees before actually lobbying for education because postgraduate students don't have any fee, they, um, they have lots of fees and they don't have any support for that. Fair enough, fair enough, that's a great answer there. So Emily, can I throw over to you? Have you got any uh, questions for Jack over here? Yes, I've got a few coming there. There's saying, what did you come into office wanting to do within your power as a SAB and have you achieved it? So I had about um, five or six points of my manifesto. I'm really, really pleased that one of mine has got um, implemented today, actually. So from today, there'll be a 24-hour library on Templeman. It'll be open 24-7 throughout the term, minus the two weeks of Christmas. So for the whole of term time now, the uh, library will be open 24-7. That was one of my main places. I'm really, really happy to students can use it now. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, I know a question that I want to ask you. It's, the same, it's one of the same ones that I've um, asked Nina, which was, uh, so far in your time of uh, being VP uh, Education, um, what would you say is your biggest achievement so far? So, not to repeat myself, That's but fine. I, I think the 24-7 library is, I mean, they're okay. quite common across the country and we've been lagging behind, so I'm really, really pleased that that's happening and actually it's something I've wanted to do for ages and I think the university's finally caught up to speed with the rest of the country, so lobbying for that and actually achieving that as well really, really quickly since coming into office, I'm really, really pleased with. I have to say I was really um, <laughs> amused and really happy when I got that email that just said, 24 hours, 7 library, done. So it's brilliant. I really, it's great. I know there are loads of people that are really happy that that development has come across. Um, Emily, can I ask you for another question for Jack, please? Oh, I've got one here saying, what do you see Kent Uni looking like in four years' time? What do see Kent Uni looking like? Um, well, there's going to be lots of building work going on. Obviously, as you can see, the library's been developed at the moment, which will be fantastic for students. So there's going to be new buildings for Kate, um, Kent Business School, maths. So, I mean, the university's investing heavily a lot in kind of developments for students, which I'm really, really positive about. Hopefully, there'll be a new student union building, which is something that the SAB team is still lobbying for and still hoping for. So, I guess physically, that's what we'll see. But also, I guess, a more diverse made up of students. There's going to be more international students different backgrounds as well and so potentially more students commuting as fees and um, costs are rising so yeah I guess that's probably what Kent Uni will look like and not much different just a lot more building work and perhaps more diverse student population. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Emily can I get one last one off of you? Hmm, okay this one's quite personal it says I've heard about the Big Kent Review what is it and what will it mean for me? Okay so What's the big, big Kent review? Okay, so this is work me, I've taken over from Alex, uh, my predecessor, and it's something we're doing in conjunction with the university. So the university has the QAA visit, which is the Quality Assurance Agency, the equivalent of Ofsted, but for the university. So they assess the university to up to standards, so the students have the right to submission. So the Big Kent review is the student submission about academic experience at Kent. So we're looking at how your course has been, how good you feel it is, what your lectures are like, anything like that. So, yeah, it's, um, it's a document, it's about 14,000 words about your academic experience at Kent, and we use surveys, data from the shop, data from um, the advice centre, talking to course reps, and talking to normal students. About, we think about 5,000, 6,000 students participated in this, so, I mean, a huge number, and we'll be publishing it tomorrow night at Union Council and AGM, so if you're interested, please come along. Uh, so yeah, it's broadly positive about the experience at Kent and it's a good read and hopefully it'll inform our kind of lobbying um, activity for the next years to come. Fantastic. And um, you mentioned something before about um, the Union Council. Um, just for those who may not know, could you just uh, yeah, describe so, what the Union um, Council is? Tomorrow night, um, Union Council and AGM is happening. It's a chance to hold us sabbatical officers to account alongside this programme, but also to hold the Kent Union trustees to account, the Board of Trustees, who are the governing body of Kent Union. So come along this free curry, I believe, for the first 120 people who comes at 6 p.m. in Wolf. And oh <laughs> I've been told by my producer that apparently for the Union Council for the first 120 there's of of the oh the AGM. For the first 120 for the AGM there's free curry. Yes, yeah there's so it's from the Thai store outside. <laughs> so if you want some free curry and for about 45 minutes an hour to hold your officers and also the Kent Union board to account and please come along and, yeah, there's free curry, so get there quick. Yeah, there you go. Well, if there's no other motivation, I don't know what you could possibly do. <laughs> um, and I've got another question here, which is, um, we, so what have you been working on for the last kind of four months? We've kind of gone through that a bit, but then it goes, 
Um, there's obviously been the, mo uh, the marking boycott. Um, what this person wants to know is how did Kent Union, or how did you personally respond to the kind of UCU pension action and the kind of marking boycott? Okay, so firstly just to say the uh, marking boycott and the assessment boycott has been suspended till the 15th of um, January. So at the moment there shouldn't be any marking boycott happening and if there is, please let me know and I'll get in contact with the lecturers. So Kent Union decided, we decided as a board to ask for a referendum, which is happening at the moment. You can still vote in it on the Kent Union website to assess kind of where we believe the students want us to lobby for and what we want to ask for, because it's such a crucial issue. I, I feel I can't take the decision alone. We have to ask the membership. So firstly, we're looking for answers for that. So until we get a policy position, I've been working both the university and the union to kind of find out the impact on students, see if there's any way we can mitigate impact. So... Yeah, that's what we're doing at the moment. Until then, um, until we get a result from the referendum, that's what I'll continue to do. But as I say, it's suspended until the 15th of January, so it shouldn't affect any of your essays or exams towards the end of the term. So it's kind of reiterate there, if there is anyone who's saying they're going to you know, refuse to mark yes. or they're boycotting it, do uh, get in touch yeah. with um, either the union or just any kind of superior kind of position yes. Yes. as yes. soon as possible. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, and in which case, I'm going to kind of put, pass over to you now and just um, kind of ask if there's anything on your side of the fence whereby, you know, you want to let people know about, if you've got anything you kind of want to mm -hmm. advertise mm -hmm. to the people watching. So um, over to you, really. So I guess uh, the main thing that I'm working on for the next couple of months is looking at hidden course costs, how much you're spending on your books, your uh, printing, anything like that. So I published a paper which I've written myself and it's going to one of the many boards at the university looking at hopefully subsidising all your printing and giving you more printer credits. So that's something to watch out for. Hopefully in January, February, we'll have some really good news about that. So that will be really successful. But also, I guess, the publicising teaching awards. Um, they've just launched. It's a fantastic chance to kind of rate your teachers, let you know if they've really made a difference to a university. But it's also open to administrative um, admin staff as well as um, course reps. So if you want to nominate any of them, then please, please, please do. And it's a great way to recognise your peers. Fantastic. Um, Emily, I've just been told that uh, you, may be having, you may have a couple more questions for us, but what can you give us? Uh, I've only got a few. This kind of covered most of them, but mm. there's one is, what is your guy over the next few months? Okay. Again, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've just answered that, but I guess I'll be, again, making sure I'm working with UCU and the university, seeing if we can get some good results there. Again, it's a national dispute, so we're limited in activity we can do, and I guess also working on my other manifesto points. I've got commitment for postgraduate space, and I'm working on that as well, as well as you can find my manifesto online, so please have a look. You'll see what I've been up to. Fantastic. Well, we won't hold you any longer, Jack. Thank you very Thank much you. for coming in and talking to us. You've been fantastic. Thank you very much. So, you. sorry, I'm afraid there's, there's no audience, but I'll clap. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. <laughs> so, coming up next is our next VP for, hopefully, VP for activities this time. Uh, I'm thinking it's Tom Curry. Am I right? I am right. So, here we are, our VP for activities, Tom Curry. Tom, welcome to the studio again. Thanks for having me. I'm loving the haircut, yeah. Oh, it's, 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 since I last saw you, you know, the curls have gone, but I'm feeling nice and smart. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, how, how are you doing? How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Just, Fair enough. Just motoring along as always. As always, you know, it's, it's from what I've heard from, you know, Nina and Jack, it's been pretty hardcore over the last uh, nine weeks. So how's it been going for you? You know, what's, what's, what's the news, really? Uh, it's hard work. <laughs> But no, everything's going fine, really, just pushing along with my big campaign aims for the year and just doing everything I can to help, help societies and get more students involved into the activities and so forth. Fantastic. I mean, if anyone's part of any sort of society, they should hopefully be getting an email or a Facebook post from Tom, because I know I, know I certainly have been um, tentatively reading yeah. them, of course, you know, with the utmost um, attention and care. Um, so, right, I'm going to kick off with a question, which, again, I'm going to say now, I definitely didn't send this. This is definitely not me. Um, it goes, now that student media have their own building, what are you currently doing to support and encourage them to produce consistent, high-quality content with their new facilities? I just wanted to throw that straight in yeah, there. Go for it. Um, it wasn't me, I promise. I, I, hand, yeah, on, no, hand on heart. But that's absolutely fine. So I suppose within my role, it's kind of a case of doing what I can to empower student media, but at the same time not stepping on toes. So it's not a case of I'll put my director's hat, get my director's chair out and say, KTV, make this, <laughs> or write a story to inquire, and say, inquire, write about this. I think the, way, the best way to do it is essentially to meet with I mean, yourself, Nat and Jack, and see, talk to you guys and see what I, what I can do to support student media. 
and if I can attend your committee meeting to see what you guys are up to, that kind of thing. So I suppose to summarise, it's not my job to tell you what to do, it's, it's essentially you guys come to me with an idea and I say, how much you need and when do you want it? Fair enough, that's <laughs> good to hear, good, good answer, I like that, I mean I know I may be slightly biased, but saying that, um, I know that one concern that people have been coming to me about is the fact that although student media have been given and um, given this new building and you know, kind of, we're being encouraged to kind of go that step further, is this, a, is this in any way detracting from other societies? This is a, it's a concern that I've I definitely heard from other people. Do you, so how would you respond from people thinking that because so much energy has been going into student media as of yeah. late, has this been taken away from the other societies? Yeah, well, I think the first thing to start with is that student media essentially isn't like a competing rival. Essentially, student media is a resource for other societies to use. So student media is there to support societies, to help them with the work they do, get them the recognition they deserve, get them the publicity they deserve, that kind of thing. Work with them to help them make videos, that kind of thing help them get stories into the inquiry and help get them experience. I mean, ultimately, societies can work with student media. There's nothing to stop, say, the classic liberal society becoming a member of student media and getting vital experience and that kind of thing. With regards to the overall picture, I mean, ultimately, space is a massive issue. If I could magic up rooms, I'd do it well, as, as soon as I could. I mean, the overall game is to produce an actual, well, get a student union building. So to essentially get a massive building like Leeds have, like Sheffield have, so ultimately we can provide all of our society activities, provide an office for RAG, and do everything the societies want to do within our own union building. And how have plans been going for this new student union building? It's been referred to quite a couple of times, but uh, I'm afraid of just throwing it on you. So how has that been going? What's the plan for that? Things are, go things are going pretty well on that. I mean, it's, it's in the university's... Uh, and the state's plan, so it's in the plan, it's a case of getting it from the plan into reality, however. Current date is 19, uh, well, it's, no, it's not 19, 2019. 2019. That's, that's the date we're looking at, but hopefully we can push that sooner. But say, everything I can do to push for that building, I will do. Fantastic. Uh, Emily, I've just seen you being handed over a couple of questions. Can you give Tom a question for you, please? Oh, you caught me there. Well, we've got this quite a risky question here. It says, how come the SAPs haven't been as visible this year compared to last? haven't seen them active since there have been only Nina at venue. <laughs> I think that's a bit unfair. <laughs> I don't think going to that, venue that constitutes being, being <laughs> active, but there we go. I mean, yeah, I'm happy cool. to there we go. weigh on that. I mean, I, I disagree with that. Yeah. Pro probably going to be biased on that, but <laughs> I, I'm happy to back it. I mean, from my own perspective, I run like a weekly activities hour, so every week I'm outside the central, there's my table, with my banner, with my get involved post to help any students who want to get involved in the extracurricular, any societies want to come by and tell me that, or tell me what they think, that kind of thing. With regards to uh, social media, I mean, you've probably seen me post over social media like countless times. I'm extremely keen to get the word out and tell and tell people what's going on. Emails, I send a weekly email to all the societies, that kind of thing. And with regards to what my um, other staff are doing, I mean, Nina, I think Nina's doing a fantastic job of sports VP. She's out there every Wednesday talking to sports clubs, talking to sports students, that kind of thing. Something that I don't think any sports tab has ever done. With regards to Jack, he's been fantastic, tag along with Nina to the sports activities, go along to the library consulting students on their views of the hot food situation. I mean, a lot of people don't like it, and Jack's very keen to respond to that. He's doing a great job in consulting students on the UCU. We've got this event right here, getting us more out and about to uh, students. Megan and Jack have also been doing door knocking as well. Fantastic. And of course, Tammy's also just um, been working the Vice Chancellor to do her Vice Chancellor's hour. So we are doing a lot of stuff. and. I mean, if anyone ever gets into this role, you'll, you'll see just how difficult it is to really publicise it. But, yeah, we are working hard. And now you have a decent excuse to say, well, why are you going to the venue today, Tom? It's like, oh, well, you know, just got to get out there, <laughs> got to see the people, got to, you know, make, shake some hands, kiss some babies. <laughs> Fair enough. So, um, Emily, can I get another question from you, please? Um, oh, yes, yeah, this one right here saying, are you going to rerun in this year's leadership election? Pretty, Ooh, pretty blunt out there. Are you going to rerun? Ooh, 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 ooh. Straight to the point. I mean, at, at this kind of position, it's kind of like, well, they call it November Blues, essentially, where you, you get so, you're so swamped and everything, the last thing you want to do is even think about rerunning, so, I don't know, ask me, ask me, ask me that in January. At, <laughs> at, at the moment, I'm just thinking, Society Networking Night, that's all I'm thinking about at the moment. Fair enough. <laughs> and so, you, you said you were talking about the Society Networking Night, for those who may not know what the Society Networking Night is, could we, what, what yeah. can you tell us about that? Sure, so this is, again, going back to the previous question about what am I doing to engage with societies, that kind of thing. I'm currently working with Society Executive to organise a Society Networking Night, and the idea is, a lot of societies said they don't feel connected with Kenyon, Union, they don't feel connected with our staff and so forth. So the idea is to bring all of our societies together, along with Kenyon staff, along with Kenyon University staff, to one, create more of a community so people feel more valued, that kind of thing, but also to give them useful experience. I mean, 
student, my student me has some fantastic knowledge, that kind of thing. Rally's got some fantastic knowledge, that kind of stuff. It's about passing it on to other societies. And I say, the most important thing to build that community that has been somewhat lacking in previous years. Fair enough, and um, you don't have to be a society exec uh, to come to the networking no, night, is that right? No, so. no, you can be a committee member, and if you're an extremely committed society member, you can also go along as well. And it will be at the Gold Bend Key in 6pm Wednesday night. Fantastic, fantastic. So, uh, I've got another one, I've got another question here that I've got on my card, which says, oh, okay, so it says, I want to know one good thing about each person of the sabbatical team. It's pretty what? blunt, and I, it's, it's quite specific, and it was, it was actually asked specifically to you, which, oh, so there we go, person by person, let's hear one good quality, it doesn't need to be professional, yeah, I don't yeah, think, it didn't yeah, say that's, so, that's but... Fine. Okay, I suppose, uh, well, I suppose for Nina it's her passion, I've never seen someone who's more passionate about actually getting the good word about sport. I mean, ultimately, her big aim this year is to get better recognition for sport and really break down this illusion that all sports clubs do is get drunk all the time and... Do, um, well, do their initiations and that kind of thing. So I suppose, first good point for one of the Sabs is Nina and her passion. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Jack, uh, Jack's work ethic, I think he's got an absolutely work ethic. The amount of things he has to balance. I mean, he's in a meeting almost like every other hour, hour of the day. He's got the UCU strike going on. He's got the 24-hour library going on. He's got the hot food situation going on, let alone all the campaigns he wants to do. So I wish I could balance work the way he does. So second point, Jack's work ethic. Uh, Megan, Megan, uh, one of the most uh, nicest people I've ever known. I've, I think of her almost as like the mother hen of the Sab team, really. I mean, she's always there offering, like, offering like, a cup of tea, offering if I can stay over, if, if say, like, if there's a, well, we're going to a, a, an event in London, that kind of thing. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic. If, if you ever need someone to rely on, she's the perfect person. So, yeah, Megan and her being empathy and all that kind of stuff. Tammy, I think Tammy's just, just leadership in general, really. I think she's doing a fantastic job at keeping us all together. Sometimes in the past, some people can have quite an authoritarian leadership, kind of says exactly, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. Tammy's got a great attitude, it's about laissez-faire, laying back, letting us all get around our own thing, but when we need her help, she's there to support us and do everything she can to help support us and everything else. Do you know what I'd say your best quality is? What? It's your eyes. <laughs> Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely fine, no problem. <laughs> Emily, can we have another question, please? Yes, yeah, Scott. Oh, the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I got this nice one, just saying, what is your greatest memory at your time at University of Kent? Oh, nice little personal one. So what was your, favorite, what's your fondest memory of your time here at University of Kent? Oh, well, uh, going along to society activities, great fun. Uh, but when I was, when I was uh, well, doing the environment campaign, I think that was my favourite part, going along to all the events we did. So we went to the Natural History Museum, when we're going out to the um, boxing, when we're going out to Hambrick Marsh, just getting out on the field, really, and that way I can just forget about everything and just look at, look at the things in the Natural History Museum. Fantastic. Um, one thing I haven't asked you yet, which um, correct me if I have, is what, what do you feel like your biggest kind of achievement has been so far um, in, over these like nine uh, nine weeks of term? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think my biggest achievement is actually keeping contact with society. So when I got elected during the summer, I spoke to a, a quite a few different societies, and one of the things that was always coming back was that they felt disconnected with Kate Union. They didn't feel like Kate Union was actually keeping in contact with them and actually cared about what they were doing and what they wanted to do. So a big priority for this year for me was to actually, one, keep in contact with society, so messaging them on a regular basis so they know what I'm doing, but also asking them, what are you guys up to? So publicising their events via the What's On at Kent, publicising their successes on the Kent Union website, working with Group Touch of the Inquiry to get society stories in there. So yeah, I suppose that's it really, just keeping in touch with societies and doing what I can to make sure they're recognised and feel a part of Kent Union, because ultimately we're all one union at the end of the day and societies make up a massive part of that. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, another question I've just been handed through is, um, if you were to only achieve one thing between now and the time for when you were to step down, yeah. what would that one thing be and why would that be? If I had to achieve one thing, it would be to change the university's perception of what the extracurricular is. So at the moment, you've potentially got a case of where academic is viewed up here, activities and sport and everything else is viewed down here. I and mean, when I go to meetings, I have to spend half the meeting explaining what VP activities actually is. And that is like a major stumbling block. And just for society as well, I mean, when they, do, when they want to do events, when sports clubs want to do events, sometimes university staff can often have a, quite a wrong perception of societies and sports clubs. So ultimately, if we could bring the two levels, so bring societies up to, well, activities up to here, that would be fantastic, because that way I wouldn't have to be lobbying for a new union building. I wouldn't have to be lobbying for, say, extra space. I wouldn't have to be lobbying for additional funding from the university. It would just happen like that. 
decided you'd have to knock on the vice chancellor's door and say, oh, Julia, can I have this? And she'd go, yeah, sure, go for it. So, yeah, if I could achieve one thing, it'd be that. No, that'd be quite a nice thing as well, because I mean, it is, it is one of those things that often is kind of put forward is the idea of balancing the kind of curricular with the extracurricular yeah. as well, because of course, you can't, I mean, obviously, you can't just have, you can't have one without the oh, other. Oh, there's got to be a balance. Yeah, there's got to be a balance, but of course, to, to just, you know, kind of ignore extracurricular as a whole, you know, most of the time, I know personally, yeah. um, obviously, I don't want to disavow my own degree here, but um, the fact that, like, if I hadn't joined KTV, you know, two, two and a bit years ago, I would most definitely not be in the same position in terms of careers and, and whatnot, uh, and even just general happiness, um, it, it, you know, than I, I am now. Yeah. And, um, no, so I totally agree yeah. with you. I would I think, stand with you there. Yeah, so I mean, I think a, the funny thing is that if you talk to people post-university and you ask them, what did you do at university? People nearly always say the society they were in, the sports club they were in, the extracurricular activities they did, rather than the degree. And I think that's quite a poignant thing, really, when it comes to people and their experience at university. Uh, OK, fantastic. Sorry, I've just been told. Emily, do you have another question? I haven't. She hasn't? <laughs> Producer Tom. <laughs> Producer Tom. Well, in which case, I'll throw it completely over to you, Tom. Now is your time to talk to the people out there in the big wide world. <laughs> um, what do you have? What do you, what do you want us to know? What, what, what do you want to kind of put out there? All right. Well, I suppose my main bit of advice for anyone out there is to get involved, join an extracurricular activity. I mean, ultimately, people can often find that there's all sorts of excuses for not getting involved. I don't have the time. I don't have the money. And I completely appreciate it. I mean, some people honestly don't have the time, but it's a case of you can put an hour a week in, you can put in as much time as you want. Ultimately, there is so much on offer with the extra curriculum. We've got 150 societies, 20 volunteer societies, 70 sports clubs. There's a huge amount of variety out there. And it's what you can do for yourself as well. It's a case of going to that job interview and saying, not only saying, I had a degree in history, but I was involved in student media, I was involved in RAG, I set up my own society. That's what impresses employers, and that's ultimately what gets you the job. The way I summarise extracurricular to people is, the degree gets your foot in the door, but it's the extracurricular that gets you the job at the end of the day. So that would be my thing to the people of Kent, Union, or Kent University, is get involved, um, be happy, and join the extracurricular activity. Fantastic. No, I totally agree. The variety we have here in, at Kent is amazing, you know, from football fans to tea appreciation society to skydiving, you know. There has to, you know, even if you feel like there isn't anything for you to kind of get be a part of, um, but you, you, that you absolutely can. You know, there's, there's always going to be there something for you. So, thank you very much, Tom. Thank you for coming down. Like I said, we are supremely lacking in, in audience, but thank you very much. So we will be right back in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere because we still have Meg and Tammy to go. So we'll be right back. Thank you so much for waiting. Welcome back to Keeping Tabs 
on the Savs here in the KTV studio. Um, and now we have our VP for welfare, the lovely Megan Wells. Meg, welcome to the studio again. It's a lot less tears than last yes, time. Yes, yes. Don't worry, I'm give it crying. time, give it time. <laughs> You're going to be crying in a minute. No, I'm joking. These are all very, very kind questions. So how, how are you today? Yeah, great, actually. Yeah, it's a bit chilly, but yeah, really good day. It has, it has just quickly turned. I mean, it was a really long kind of summer, like, you know, quite warm, quite mild, yeah. then bang, done. Snap. Frost. <laughs> Terrible. I hate the cold. Anyway, enough about me and the cold. Um, more about you. So it's been nine weeks. But of course, for you, it's not just nine weeks. It's yeah. like a year and nine weeks. Yeah. You've been in the position... For, you know, you've had your first term, you know, coming back into yeah. it, how's it, how's round two in, feel in the ring? Yeah, it's excellent. Um, I mean, I wouldn't have run if I didn't like my job. I absolutely love my job. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know, great to be working with a new team, um, different priorities and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's, it's really good. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Well, I'm going to kick off with one of these questions here at the top, which is, you're nearly at the end of your two-year term. Well, she's got some time left. She's got some time left. But anyway, you're nearly at the end of your two-year term. What are you most proud of do? Of what are you most proud of having done at Kent Union, and what are you least proud of? Oh, okay. Can I have two for my most proud? Go on then. Okay, so I would say la from last year's, it was certainly the extension of Rutherford and Elliot um, tenancy license licenses from 31 weeks to 37 weeks. Um, that's just like a huge, huge win for us. Um, and this year, um, getting the 24-hour bus, um, I think, yeah, that's definitely those two. What I'm least proud of, I, I really don't know. Um, Any stories of, you know, going to do a bit of canvassing at a venue and then all of a sudden it all going wrong? I mean, according to the person who asked Tom that question, you know, going to venue is pivotal for politics and here it can. I'm not, I'm not quite sure, because I'm not an avid venue goer, because um, I like my sleep too much. But um, what my le probably last year, I didn't go out and talk to enough students, whereas this year I've been out door knocking, been out flyering, been to talking to students a lot more. So I'd probably say last year, um, not, not engaging with the membership as much, but I've rectified that. But 2014 and 15 are the years of yeah. going out there and yeah. cold calling people in park where they're in their dressing yeah. gowns and bunny slippers, and you're just like... How can I help you? Exactly. We've yeah had a couple of queries about radiators and showers when I when I was door knocking in Park Woods. So you know, helped them out there. <laughs> Watch going with the screwdriver. Yeah, and the yeah. Out. fantastic. Jack of all trades. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Well, I'm going to pass over now to Emily. Emily, what have you been getting over in social media? We've been having quite quite a variety of them. Um, there's one saying, "Well, you were a sab last year as well. Do you think you've been more or less successful than last year?" I think that's a hard one because I've only I'm only like what five months into this this year and mm. so I've you know still got seven months to go I'm not quite out the door yet um, I think it's different because you have different I mean the 24 hour bus was this year so that's a huge success um, but I guess it's for the students to decide at the end if I've been successful or not it's you know they'll be written down in the yeah, books of history yeah. they, they'll be the It'll 100th be... anniversary and they'll be going ah there'll be a statue of Megan Wells <laughs> yeah. 24 hour bus <laughs> yeah it'd be a pretty small statue according to these you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah I do think that's it's a bit unfair isn't it that, that you Tammy and Jack have been kind of I don't know. So how tall are they? I think they're like. They're right. So the small ones are five foot, and the and Jack J Jack and Nina are six foot. But actually, it's not that much difference between my actual height and it, it, these two look funny at that. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I have to say, it's a bit having these guys stare at me all day when we were setting up. It was a bit. I mean, I, I was. It was kind of getting me prepared for when you guys actually did come in. But oh well. Oh, I, I, I. You said to me actually when we were just setting up that. You were going to wear yeah, that shirt Yeah, I nearly today. wore that shirt today. It would have been really... Oh, to be honest, it's not that far off it, but... It, fair it, enough, fair it enough. It would have been quite awkward. <laughs> anyway, back to, back to welfare. Um, I'm going to say now, so... Is that... Well, is, these are all, these are all, I mean, funny enough, they're all going to be referring to last year, but I won't, I won't hold it against anyone. Is there anything last year that you didn't achieve that you would like to continue this year? Ooh, um, well, actually, the one thing that I... So I had 15 things on my manifesto last year, and I achieved, or partly achieved, 14 of them. There was one that I didn't. Um, and that was around um, inclusive learning plans and um, with student parents. And um, I'm, like, everything on my manifesto from last year, I'm still continuing this year. It doesn't kind of stop at Ju July the 30th. At uh, June the 30th, sorry. Um, so, yeah, I want to try and do some work with that. But our um, Shoots with Disabilities officer has been doing some great work on um, ILPs. Um, so it's actually quite nice to have a student take on the... kind of take on what they're doing. So, um, yeah, that sort of thing. So probably around, uh, around student parents, but um, I was in a meeting this morning um, about, you know, trying to get 
um, maternity policies in the, in the university and stuff like that. So actually, we are we are working on that. One. I mean, uh, I would, I would, I would, this is an issue that I wasn't actually completely aware of. So, I mean, how many uh, of the kind of students here at Kent are student parents? Well, this is one of this is the one of the key things. The university doesn't hold, like have any records of how many student parents, which is one of the things we want to get. We want to get the university recording um, how many student parents and the student carers we have on campus, so they can actually support them better. Because you know, we haven't just got a handful. We will have a lot of student parents, but because the university doesn't kind of collate that information, we have no idea and we can't support them. So kind of that is the main thing of getting the data fair enough fair enough emily can i throw over to you for another question please? yes uh, we got quite one good one here saying how can we make volunteers aware of mental health issues and ensure that they can signpost people to services cool um so i guess it's working with um our students with disabilities officer um and and myself we we want to do some stuff on um going to be doing some stuff around mental health in march as well um getting vol um uh, you know, awareness, uh, awareness to students. But I think um, one thing that I was in a couple of years ago was around um, giving some key volunteers um, mental health training with um, the wellbeing team. I mean, it's something that we're actually looking at um, in Medway with the local NHS there is work getting key volunteers to um, go on some mental health training uh, with the NHS there. So hopefully it's something we could um, bring across to Canterbury. I know that they do st stuff like um, mental health first aid kind of sessions. Mm. Um, I'm not, not quite sure what that entails, but apparently they're very good. Um, and so maybe something like that or working with the wellbeing service more. Because I, I do know that it's something that uh, quite a lot of if student volunteers are kind of seen as those people that students go to who they kind of... Um, respect and you know they're in contact a lot of the time for and um, so I do think that yeah like like you mentioned signposting is is crucial to getting it because we can't I, I'm not allowed to give any advice you know I can't give advice about housing you know I'm not I'm not allowed that but I think it's yeah I think that's a good point to work on and if someone was having issues yeah. with that kind of uh, that kind of issue um where, where would they go? Where would become the first point of contact? So the first point of contact would be the wellbeing service, uh, which is near Dolce Vita, but you can also find them on, um, uh, I think there's a link to them on the student guide. Um, and the wellbeing service are absolutely fantastic. There's counsellors, but there's also mental health advisors and wellbeing advisors, and they're a, a really, really great team in the university. So that they would be your first point of call. Fantastic. So, Emily, can I get another one off you? Yes, got another one here saying, what has been done so far on the general election campaign? Okay, so this, is, this was one of my kind of p key points that I led on um, when I was campaigning, and um, it's re I'm really pleased that it's um, half of the um, priority campaign for the sabbatical officers. Uh, so quite a lot has been done so far. We had the student manifesto, which we talked to hundreds of students um, over Freshers' Week, um, and basically we've collated a, a student manifesto of six key policies, uh, one for Canterbury, one for Medway, about what matters to students um, and then it, today or tomorrow they should be getting sent out to all the candidates uh, in the in the upcoming general election for considering actually the University of Kent has four constituencies so we ha everyone just thinks of Canterbury but there's three in Medway as well and um, so they're going to be sent out to the, the main candidates there um, and we'll do some analysis when they come back. Uh, next term also um, is kind of the big push. We've been planning for the big push on voter registration. Uh, so we've got really exciting, I think it's probably the first place I've announced it, but really exciting um, things to do with voter registration. Um, and we're going to get wristbands, a bit like the cane stock ones, which get you deals. Um, there'll be a different deal every week. So one night, one week it might be in the venue, one week in Woody's, and you've got to prove that you're registered to vote to then get these deals. Um, so the registration vote, we're going to have Rock the Vote nights. Um, so yeah, like lots and lots has been happening. We've had that. Uh, we've had the um, happy or not machine. I don't know if you've seen the smiley face machine in Essentials. We did some polling on there about how many people are registered to vote. Um, so yeah, we've been, been doing quite a lot, and it's yeah, it's going to be great up to the seventh of May. I'm going to I'm going to take the day off. I think on the eighth of May. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. You're saying about something about a rock the vote night. Yeah. Just, just out of sheer curiosity, what is that? So they're like a huge thing in America, and they get like massive bands like. Foo Fighters and that, like, I'm sorry guys, we can't get you the Foo Fighters, um, but basically it's, um, we're going to have them in Woody's and Cooper's, and it's a night where we're going to have um, bands playing, we're going to have some political bands as well, um, and it's about just getting people registered to vote, um, get them politically engaged and actually saying, you know, this voting is such an important thing for everybody to take part in, and it's just kind of making voting fun, really, with music. and. Fair enough. 
Absolutely. Keep 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 the uh, student kind of body engaged. Yeah. So I know there's definitely been kind of like news and kind of media coverage around the fact that we are feeling a bit alienated, but it doesn't need to be true. Um, another thing I've just, uh, I've got here is, um, of course, there's been quite a lot of focus on what you've been doing last year. But yeah. there's a question. Uh, it's, it's quite a personal one, but hopefully that's okay. Um, which is, um, what are your plans for next year? Because of course you've done your two terms, which uh, means that. Uh, so once I've finished. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I'm currently in the process of applying for a master's. Um, I haven't um, I wrote my personal statement a couple of weeks ago. I need to get it checked out. But, um, yeah, applying for um, a master's at our Brussels campus. Fantastic. So, yeah. Oh, that sounds, that sounds I'm really gonna exciting. I'm going to be that student's like, what about Brussels? Uh, what, what are you going to be doing over in Brussels? <laughs> um, hopefully, a political strategy and communication. So running campaigns, lobbying, that sort of thing. Perfect. So, well, yeah. you've, got, you've got the perfect kind of... <laughs> Previous experience, yeah. hopefully, in, um, make that really a possibility. So good luck with all that. Thank you. Now, I'm going to pass over to you and hint, say hint that... to get a scholarship on that one, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the university is watching. T take this on board. Get, let her in, let her in. Um, I'm going to pass over to you now. Um, I know you've, you've mentioned quite a few of the kind of plans and mm -hmm. things you've got coming up in the next kind of few months. Um, but if there's anything else you kind of want to put out there, anything you want to tell the greater student body, now's your time. Um, so I think probably the main things is um, register to vote for the general election coming up. Um, it is you know something that we only get every five years. It's such an important thing, and uh, yeah, it's really really easy to register to vote. And you might be thinking, oh well, I'm an international student, I'm an EU student, I can't register to vote. Actually, a lot of people can register. So if you're a European uh, Union student, you can register. Um, for local elections and European elections but if you're a citizen of a Commonwealth country you can actually vote in our general elections so a lot of students um, of our international students can also vote. Um, what else am I working on? I'm going to hopefully be re uh, relaunching the zero tolerance policies, sexual harassment and discrimination that we have um, on our, in our outlets. I'm going up to um, <coughs> Manchester on the 16th of December to have a look at um, some schemes that they have up at their student union there. Uh, so working a lot on that and uh, working on improving the uh, Medway prayer um, provisions as well over in see Medway. Fantastic. So a nice and busy year coming up for you then. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm looking forward to hearing all about it. I'm sure we'll be having you back in here yeah. in the near future. So thank you very much for thank your you. time, Meg, and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Yeah, thank We're just going to cut quickly to a, another VT. Um, so bear with us because we've got the big kahuna coming up. We've, of course, got Tammy Naidu, our union president. So don't go anywhere. for waiting and of course there is a woman who needs no introduction apart from that I will give her one anyway just in case it is of course Tammy Naidu our union president Tammy how are you doing I'm all right thank you I've just come in because I've been outside on campus today doing my campus kitchen so it's quite nice to be in a warm studio <laughs> <laughs> fantastic well it's, it's been it feels like, well, I keep saying this to everyone, it feels like absolutely ages since we were last in this position. You know, know. It, we were all just, ner like, emotions flying high and everything. I mean, I don't know how emotional you'd have been from being in the kitchen all day. Um, I'm, I'm not entirely emotional from being out in the kitchen. I feel quite <laughs> numb. Uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, but, yeah, it does, it does feel weird being back here after last time. <laughs> Definitely. Absolutely. So, it's been, I keep saying it's been nine weeks. It's actually been months, but it's been nine, nine weeks of this first term. Um, how's that all been going for you so far? Yeah, it's been going really well, I think. Um, started getting uh, my campaign sort of uh, going, um, getting loads of events prepared. Um, we've launched a new strategy and sort of been kind of rolling that out, which has been really great. Uh, stuff like that. So yeah, thanks for your well. Fantastic. Um, and one question I'm going to ask, which I think I've asked everyone else, is so far in, the, in these kind of nine weeks of term, what would you say has been your kind of greatest achievement or your kind of biggest move so far? Oh 
goodness. Um, I mean, I've only just started launching um, my my campaign, so predominantly my my campus uh, my kitchen facilities campaign. Um, I can't really say what's what's happened so far. Really, it's it's still a bit early for days for me. I'm afraid. No worries. Nothing, nice. nothing too big. Well, yeah. you've mentioned your campus kitchen kind of yeah. campaign. Um, for those who might not know, what is what is that? So um, this is focusing predominantly on uh, the accommodation in Rutherford and Elliot. Most people who live in Rutherford and Elliot will know uh, that the accommodation is dire. It is really bad. I mean, um, the the rooms and everything are fine. It's the oldest college, but. Um, you're given um, a kitchen which is absolutely tiny, probably about the size of the, actually probably smaller than the, the car cardboard kitchen we built out on the plaza. Um, and to be honest, the cardboard kitchen on the plaza has got more provisions because it's got a, an oven, whilst you don't even really get that in, uh, uh, in Rutherford and Elliot. So we're trying to get feedback from students to understand what it is really the most important thing about their accommodation. Is it the, the space, the social aspects, the health, so actually being able to cook meals that are actually good for you, not just loads of microwave ones, or is it actually the economic aspect? So um, being able to cook for yourself and not having to eat out all the time. So it's things like that. No, I definitely know that's definitely been a uh, big issue with most people who've been living in you know, Elliot and Rutherford, yeah. you know, learning how to you know, do all sorts of meals out of a microwave. Yeah. I have heard of uh, someone who said they did do a whole Christmas dinner oh in my a microwave, gosh. which I, I, I actually want to see if them prove that yeah. before, before everything changes with, uh, you know, <laughs> that hopefully with your campaign. Yeah, fingers no. crossed. But um, yes, yeah, so I'll throw over to Emily. Now, Emily, do you have a question for Tammy? Oh, I've got loads coming in. I've got one saying, do you believe Kent Union is accountable? Ooh. So accountable generally, I'd presume. I imagine so. Um, until, it's, it's, very, it's a very difficult question to answer, to be honest, because... Um, I recognise, even when I was a volunteer as well, that Kent Union did do a lot to try and, and be accountable, but it wasn't incredibly accessible, perhaps, the way that it was. So until, so until now, um, a sabbatical office would be accountable, as the same as part-time officers at Union Council, and that was pretty much the only thing, but Union Council isn't incredibly um, accessible, um, and uh, you know, not everyone can go to a meeting in the evening, and uh, not everyone wants to sit through something like that as well. I mean, uh, so uh, I think, but this year we're trying to make a lot more effort. So um, tomorrow we're going to be presenting some ideas for our democracy review. So if anyone wants to come along to AGM and uh, find out sort of what kind of ideas we have plans and actually take part in that, so to help us become more accountable, then please do. Um, but I definitely think that there's there's more that can be done, and that's what we're trying to do right now with the democracy review. So, absolutely, yeah. and I, I'm going to reiterate this. I know this will be an absolute pivotal selling point, which is the first 120 to the AGM get a free curry. Yeah, is that, they do. See, you've got to go. It's it's you're helping yourself and you're feeding yourself. It's re the really nice Thai food one from outside. There you go. Uh, really uh, hopefully, one. you'll get you know the lines of Elliot and Rutherford <laughs> residents, you know, just queuing up outside. Um, fantastic. So I'm going to move on to another thing, which is. This is a long one. So, what is the next big thing the SAB team is aiming to change? We've had the venue opening hours change, the library being open 24-7, Rutherford and Elliot um, accommodation students able to stay in halls all year. What is on the cards for this year? So what's the kind of big new change you want to see on uh, kind of Kent Union or Kent University affairs in the next year? Well, I mean, the two big things I personally think that are happening, so um, on the Medway campus, we're soon going to be getting our um, student hub, which is really, really exciting. It's going to, I think at the moment it's on the cards for um, not next year, but the year after. Um, but, I mean, we've been getting students in to sort of get ideas of what they think of the accommodation and stuff like that. So I think that's going to be massive because we really want a union building on the Canterbury campus as well. But having a union building on the Medway campus will just be amazing. Um, also, um, one, our, our priority came, campaign this year is Your Voice, so we're doing a lot of stuff with the internal democracy, so as mentioned before, trying to make us more accountable, making it easier to get cha changes happening in Kent Union, and so I think that when, that, when that's achieved, I think that will be a, a really massive change, because hopefully we'll get in getting so many more students engaged in Kent Union. Fair enough, that's a great answer. So, and yeah. also, you mentioned it previously, I know that I've been kind of uh, keeping quiet on it, but... Um, in terms of Medway, I mean, what would you say? Uh, so you say you kind of there are plans to get a student unions building yeah. in Medway as well as um, you know Canterbury campus. Mm. Um, what else in terms of Medway would you say is a kind of a, an aim for the entire SAB team or, um, for a big? So what would you say is kind of your your big aim this year for for Medway? I think um, I mean so I've been spending a lot of time in Medway this term, and I, one thing I've really noticed is that. 
um, often, I mean, the unions done this in the past, and also the university, there's a lot that they don't recognise sometimes that Medway students aren't the same as Canterbury students, not because they're different people, but they're studying different courses. It's a very different environment on, on the Medway campus. And sometimes I think we just try and replicate what we have here over there or try and, and treat them in the same way. And I think that that's not the right way to go because it's a different community. Like here it's just Kent, Kent students whilst over there it's Christchurch students, Greenwich students, and, and they mingle all together. And I think that um, what I really want to try and do is help um, sort of develop that community over there and um, I mean we've been working really closely with Greenwich through the uh, GK Greenwich and Kent Union together um, trying to make sure that we've got society provisions and support provisions for them um, and I'm really hoping that um, it's something the universities are beginning to recognise as well that they need to work together more and I'm really hoping that towards the end of this year that will be happening a lot more. So, yeah? Fantastic, no, thank you very much. Emily, have you got a question for Tammy? This one's my favourite one by oh. far. Oh, okay. And it, it came along in cap lock, so this person is passionate, okay? <laughs> Let's warn you now. It says, I would like to thank whoever is responsible for getting Pork & Co on campus today. Club Burrito next. Well, who knows? I mean, we got we actually got club uh, we got pork and co up today to kind of support the uh, the campus kitchen campaign. But if everyone's loving it, we can try and get them coming up again, and we can definitely speak to Club Burrito. I don't think that should be a problem. <laughs> we'll we'll find out, see what they think. You know, who knows what they might do. There's always there's always there's always a <laughs> you fantastic can always ask. opportunities. Yeah, why not ask and that shall receive? You know, there's always going to be a uh, a uh, kind of almost desperate audience, uh, uh, students yeah. uh, starving and. You know, vying for that pulled pork and vying for those burritos. They've run out, I think, actually, because I, when I when I went up about an hour ago, and they weren't on the last twenty. So <sighs> that's just ruined my day. I, I don't <laughs> want to do this anymore. I've got to get home. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I'll get you. I'll get you another question, um, which is uh, they're all the same. It's, it's saying ask. It's all asking about your big goals for the year. We've been asking. We've been going on for so long about your goals for the year. So you were talking about Greenwich and. Um, most people aren't kind of entirely sure about Greenwich, but then also, I mean, I don't know if this, is, this kind of accounts, but also kind of the campuses out of um, the UK, you know, mm -hmm. Brussels and Paris. I mean, yeah. uh, do you uh, kind of cooper uh, cooperate and kind of work with um, those campuses quite often? I mean, what's, what's, how things work with that? It's a little bit different. So um, the Paris campus as well, because of the fact that we don't actually have students who live there the entire year. Um, and Athens, that's sort of, it's, it's sort of affiliation. Brussels is a little bit different even again in the sense we don't really as Kent Union we don't really do very much I mean um, we help them with their elections and things like that and uh, we speak to them about what's going on but it's 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 very different we still we we kind of like have a link there but we don't we don't really represent them because it's very difficult for us to do so because we're so far away it just yeah be a bit uh, fair yeah. enough only a matter of curiosity. Yeah. Uh, Emily, can I ask for another question for Tammy, yes. please? Oh, this, I, I personally think this is a great question. It says, in your manifest, you have mentioned fixed taxi prices. What has been done so far on this? So uh, what I've been doing with them is I've been talking to uh, different taxi companies at the moment, trying to get the best deals. I, I've got a couple of quotes. A lot of taxi companies are really interested in the concept. I think at the moment I'm just trying to work hard on, um, on persuading them that uh, on getting us a good price because I've been offered certain prices but I wasn't very happy with them because I didn't really feel because I well I they offered me a price and then I called them up and asked them to give me a quote um, for that same trip and it seemed like it was more so I was uh, not entirely content um, but uh, I'm going to try and kind of pursue it further going not only down the sort of uh, the, uh, for us it'll be better because um, students will get cheaper taxis for them it'll be better because they'll get more business also looking at the safety aspect so the fact that someone can go out they may have lost their friends but it's okay because they know they can get home for a fiver um, so, or at least you know, to Westgate or something like that so it's definitely something I'm pursuing but I don't want to just um, accept a price because I know that um, if it's too expensive students won't use it anyway so I, I want to take a bit longer and make sure I get it right Fantastic. And I know that um, we would, you were saying about taxing the whole safety aspect. Mm. Um, that kind of reflects back to something that I know I've heard of it, um, in over the last few weeks, of course, the Lights Out campaign. Yeah. Um, of how, you know, after midnight, uh, certain kind of what may be considered as kind of all, uh, superfluous uh, street lights get just turned off. Yeah. Um, I mean, what would, what's your stance on this? What, so what, what are you kind of doing to... 
Uh, well, me and Nina have been uh, working on that bit ever since we heard about it. Uh, we started looking to what we can do. <clears throat> so the there's a petition because uh, it's not. Uh, I think there's there's often uh, not a lot of awareness about this, but um, the streetlights aren't Canterbury City Council; they're Kent County Council. So it's a lot more complicated than just kind of kind of because I think. Um, it would be a lot easier if it were, we could just go to the, the local council to speak about it. It's something that I think the decision was made, um, but they didn't really know because they it's, it's Kent as a county looking in at one small area of Canterbury. Um, and there's a petition to kind of get them to review it. Um, so me and Nina are working on an awareness campaign, <clears throat> sorry, uh, to try and get as many students as possible actually aware of this petition, to try and get them more and more, si uh, more, and more um, signing the petition. We've got this whiteboard that's going to be coming out soon. It's going to be saying um, why street lighting is important to us and, you know, because students want to get home safe, I'm, gonna, I'm also in the process of um, getting a little video of actually what it's like to try and walk down that way. Um, and just try and collect as much stuff as possible to just create as much awareness because I think that the key is <clears throat> to uh, pairing up with the local with local citizens as well. So um, uh, the people who live down <clears throat> St Michael's Place as well, and just to try and create as much awareness as possible for this this uh, this petition and, and get the council to recognise that something needs to be done. Fantastic, thank you very much. Now, Tammy, it's that time where basically I'm going to pass over My to favorite. you. Um, the floor is yours. If you have anything you want to kind of just throw out, to, throw out there to the students, um, now is the time. Cool. Um, yeah, so this year, I guess, my, as I've mentioned already, my, my two really big things are um, my uh, on-campus kitchens facilities um, campaign, so trying to get the university to recognise the need for uh, better kitchen facilities on campus. Um, also... Um, looking at the internal democracy of Kent Union, so trying to make it more accessible, um, and we'll be doing a lot of stuff with that with the Democracy Review, and hopefully we'll get lots of stuff out of uh, tomorrow's AGM, because I, I just, um, I meet so many students on a day-to-day -day basis, even outside today when I've been um, doing my kitchen campaign, uh, coming up and talk to me about, you know, they, they wish there was like more vegan food on campus, and they'd really like somewhere to be able to go microwave their meals, and like just stuff like that, because they've seen kitchen, they're like, they've, they've uh, associated that, I've just come and had a chat, and it's, for those students to be able to quite easily just bring something forward like that and, and, and tell us so we can truly represent them. And I think at the moment, the systems that we've got, it's just too difficult to do that because you have to submit a motion, then go to a meeting, and then there has to be enough people at this meeting, then it has to go here and there. And it's just, it's too clunky and we really need to try, and hopefully through the democracy review we'll, we'll find a really nice smooth system uh, where everyone can get involved and really do feel like their voices are being heard. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Tammy. <laughs> no That's worries. all the time we have. And that's all the time we have for keeping tabs on the SABs as a whole. So I just want to say thank you so much to you for watching. It's been fantastic. And getting all your brilliant questions in, I want to say a, a very large thank you to our social, uh, social media specialist, Emily. Thank you so much for Emily for being thank fantastic you and really having my back <laughs> with those questions. And of course, thank you to the SABs themselves for coming in. That's so to Tammy, to Meg, to Tom, to, <laughs> to Jack, and to Nina. <sighs> Not in one breath. I've been Marnie Chadwick. You've been watching in the KTV studio. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.